Are you going to listen to them? Drive in style. Or are you going to listen to me, who's won seven times? What about the mystics? You say winning numbers are all in your head, literally. You thought you'd win. Oh, I knew I would win. She meditated her way to $112 million. Handbags, Bentleys, but didn't visualize how to save it. And before you dive into the deep end of the pool... I have brought with me $3,030. We are buying 1,515 tickets. Whoa! <laughs> That's insane! <laughs> Our 2020 cameras are there. Neighborhood pools. It's not just for the office anymore. Tonight, the story's not over. It's just getting started. Ways to improve your odds for that winning streak. If you've got numbers that are talking to you, get to the store. Buy your tickets. Good evening, I'm Elizabeth Vargas. And I'm David Muir. The experts have a name for it, a sudden wealth event. Oh. Wouldn't that be nice? Very. If anything qualifies, it's this week's Powerball frenzy, the jackpot $1.6 billion, the biggest in history. Tonight, we know of three winning tickets. And if you didn't win, there might be one silver lining because of what often comes with winning. Big money, big problems. But first, Matt Gutman with what we've just learned about all the winners. $24 million prize with 12 co workers. She wrote a book about it in which she describes the bonus that comes with a lot of jackpot that no one tells you about. Let's call it the vultures. I had people coming up to my job, uh, sending facts, asking for money. My doorbell ring, and it's people I don't know. So I had gotten to the point where I was not opening it up the door. Winners of the lottery get out there and their names are released. It's literally the equivalent of throwing uh, blood or chum in the water to a bunch of sharks. And everybody devours these folks. According to Chicago lawyer Andrew Stoltman, 75% of lottery winners go broke within five years. Often thanks to shady financial planners looking to line their own pockets. Recommending a more speculative investment, a riskier investment, can pay a financial advisor 10 to 15 times more than, for example, recommending a government bond. Stoltman has represented what he calls six lotto losers. Unsophisticated when it came to investing, they put their jackpots in all the wrong places and lost practically everything. Still, it could have been worse. Like what happened roughly a thousand miles away in sunny Florida. Well, once they started doing a lottery in Florida, all of us who lived here our whole lives knew that it was it was just going to be a recipe for, for disaster for some people. Author Carl Hyacin wrote a novel called Lucky You about a Florida lottery winner who winds up dead. But a few years later, this woman seemingly turned his fiction into reality. I did a uh, book on Organize Me Now, it's a finance book. On Dee Dee Moore was a self-proclaimed financial planner who showed up on the doorstep of an unsuspecting $30 million winner named Abraham Shakespeare. He kept having problems with all his financing and that's when he had asked me to help him out. Shakespeare had been deluged with family and friends begging him for money. For example, he gave a $63,000 loan to his friend Greg Smith, a local barber. Abraham had a life of drama. Moore convinced Shakespeare she could help him with what was left of his winnings. But shortly after Dee Dee arrived, Abe vanished. Everybody in town seemed to think that you know, Abe's he's come to a bad way. But nobody had any evidence. The cops suspect Dee Dee. Do you get tired of people asking you for money all the time, Abe? They don't take no for But Moore produced this video she did with Shakespeare, claiming he'd been planning to skip town. An easy way to escape all those vultures. Are you going to miss your home? Yeah, but I miss it, but life goes on. Detective Dave Wallace wasn't buying it. He knew that something was fishy, but it seemed like he didn't have enough evidence. Correct. So he enlists Shakespeare's friend, Barber Greg Smith. I just told him I'll see what I can do. So I think what we should do is come up with a... What he did was record hour after hour of conversations with Dee Dee Moore, tricking her with a homemade spy system straight out of James Bond. But an extremely delicate microphone as well. That's brilliant. That's the Dee Dee Moore catch can. He devised this catch can himself. 
a recording device inside a Red Bull can. I worked undercover narcotics for eight years, and I wouldn't have came up with this. Dee Dee trusted Smith because she had a deal with him. Help her avoid the heat, and she'd help him avoid his $63,000 debt to Abe. I'm so deep in this now. If you go down, I go down right now. Yeah, I'm not going to get caught. Doing right? this type of I got to find Abraham. I just need some time. She reveals a lot to Greg, all caught on tape. But there's still no body. Crucial to prove murder. That's exactly why in another case in Chicago, authorities exhumed a man named Arush Khan. We want to get to the bottom of it, you know. And the thing is, after he won the lottery, and the next day later he passes away, it's very awkward. It raises some eyebrows. Sure enough, blood analysis revealed cyanide. It's almost inevitable that people are going to read this story and look at it like it's murder she wrote. Chicago Tribune crime reporter Jeremy Gorner says the case became a sensation. The death was ruled a homicide, but no one was ever arrested. Arush Khan's family has spent the last few months desperately trying to figure out what happened to him. Khan's family suspected his wife. She denied it, and there was never enough evidence to prove anything. The case remains unsolved, but back in Florida, Greg Smith's undercover sleuthing was about to help close the Abe Shakespeare case. Dee Dee finally reveals she knows where the body is. It's on her property. The police move in, digging right where Dee Dee instructed Greg. They find Shakespeare under a concrete slab. Cause of death, who shots fired from 38. Later based to D.D. Moore. State of Florida versus Doris Donegan Moore. The no longer bleach blonde, now brunette, D.D. cries copiously at the trial, but never takes the stand. But after hearing all of Greg Smith's undercover tapes, the jury convicts her after only three hours of deliberation. The defendant is guilty of first degree murder. And so. I'm not nervous. In an exclusive jailhouse interview, would I hear an apology for her role in this Shakespearean tragedy? Hardly. This shrew had not been tamed. Did you murder Abraham Shakespeare? Absolutely not. Did you bury him in your backyard? Absolutely not. Why are you laughing? Because... A, a man is dead. He's been murdered, yes, clearly. Yes. And you're laughing. Yeah. Because I find it entertaining that people are that ignorant because there are so many things that proves my innocence. You ended up in his house uh -huh. with all the rest of his money. Then he ended up dead in your property. Okay, but you... Shot by your gun. You don't find any of that unusual or odd. Absolutely not, considering the people he hung around. She says Shakespeare was killed by a drug dealer who threatened her to cover it all up. She claims these papers are from witnesses who can corroborate her story, but they seem as worthless as losing Powerball slips. These witnesses don't exist, and that certainly looks like your handwriting. What do you mean? The that looks like your handwriting. What you said were witnesses' notes looks like your handwriting. No, I don't think not. that these witnesses exist. Yeah. I... Moore leaves our interview to continue serving life without parole. While Abe Shakespeare lies in a simple resting place. A stark reminder that even when lottery dreams come true, they can end up a nightmare. When we come back, meet the mystics. Did secrets from the secret lead to her winning 112 million? You thought you'd win. Well, I knew I would win. And did his inner voice lead to winning and ladies wrestling? <laughs> Mind over millions. Next. Here's Rebecca Jarvis with The Mystics. Chino Hills 7-Eleven employee M. Faruqi can expect to see an uptick in customers through those hip bookworm glasses. Wow, well, I'm very happy and very excited. Folks have a tendency to flock back to lucky stores like this, where winning tickets were sold. But this lottery winner says the secret to winning isn't in the store, it's in your mind. Meet Cynthia Stafford. In 2007, she was a single mom raising her deceased brother's kids when she won the California Mega Millions Lottery. You thought you'd win. Well, I knew I would win. 
Stafford says believing and visualizing yourself winning is the key. Part of the Ask the Universe philosophy popularized by The Secret and similar books a few years back. I'm an avid reader. I read a book called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. It isn't just hocus pocus to you. No, I'm not into magic. It's about your belief. What you believe in strongly will manifest and does. And Stafford says her belief was specific. She says she visualized the exact amount of money she would win. $112 million. What's the significance of 112? You saw that number prior to winning. I like the number 11 because I'm born in November, so that's pretty much it. And then just chose the two. I was trying to consolidate the number to match my birthday. That's basically what I was doing. Ah, that birthday thing. A crucial factor for numerologist Glennis McCants. What are lucky numbers? They're numbers that are connected to your birthday. And if you look at the people who win the lottery, so often they tell you, you know, I played my birth numbers, or I played my mom's birth numbers. That to me is not an accident, because numbers that are around you are considered lucky. I don't think that your birthday has any effect on your chances of winning the lottery. You can probably visualize the esteem math professor Aaron Abrams holds for the great science of numerology. I'm open to hearing any theory that has some evidence behind it, but usually people with theories like this don't have any evidence behind it. But then there's the case of Jay Vargas, who was just 19 when he won $35 million in the South Carolina Powerball jackpot in 2008. <laughs> some of those winnings to launch an all-girls wrestling group called Wrestlelicious. There's no redheads in the ring, though. You gonna dye your hair red? No. There's not a chance I can compete in that ring. Jay's secret? He claims he just started hearing numbers in his head. It was a voice like any other. It wasn't my own or anyone that I'd recognize. Telling you numbers? Yeah. The whole day. And did you tell anyone about the numbers? The cousin. He was like, man, you... That's probably lottery numbers. So once I played the lottery, once I put the numbers in, the voice stopped. So how long after you bought the ticket did you find out you were a winner? Uh, that night. <laughs> you weren't surprised? No, because I knew I was going to win. Did you it... can't be surprised if you know something's going to happen, you know? My advice to everyone listening, if you've got numbers that are talking to you, get to the store and buy your ticket. And realize, sure, you have to believe it's possible for it to happen. Cynthia believed it to her core. Stafford said she's donated more than a million dollars to charities. But she also splurged. How many thousands of dollars of handbags are we looking at? About 200,000. 200,000 dollars in handbags. Yeah. She gave us a tour of her house that she also visualized owning. And I remember when I saw it, I thought to myself, this is going to be my house. It's decorated in lottery winner chic with pricey art. How much was this painting? Oh, I don't want to get into the prices of my paintings, but it was not cheap. And interesting conversation pieces like this unusual gold chair. This represents ancient Egypt and it represents royalty. Royalty? Yes. Outside, her two Bentleys costing a mere $400,000. Oh, these are my babies. <laughs> my this is my convertible. That's more of my family car. And uh, you want to take a ride in it? Let's go for a spin. This car can go 200 miles an hour. <laughs> Life was good for both Stafford and Vargas. But recently, there have been bumps in the road, a brief marriage, and an expensive divorce for Jay. You see the man right there? He has $35 million. Wow. Vargas claims he has 50% of his winnings left. What did you do with your money? Invested it. And says he's scheduled to start shooting a wrestlelicious reality show in March. You can't just, you know, spurge all at once. I didn't want to be one of those stories where, you know, you get gain the money in this wealth and then lose it all but if cynthia stafford was visualizing long-term financial stability the universe hasn't delivered sadly on january 6 stafford filed for bankruptcy this week she told us she made some bad investments and lost money in the stock market
We told Glennis McCants about the latest developments in Cynthia's life. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Does this ultimately mean? What does this, that they're out? Like they're broke? Five, six. Nine, well, it might raise some questions about any mystical approach to the lottery. But McCants says, don't stop believing. Right there, there's a winner, there's a winner. So even though she won the money, she, it, didn't, it didn't fix her life, did it? And it's 112 million bucks. And that's a message for everyone playing. If you think the money is going to fix your life, it's not. Now it's a whole new situation you have to deal with. When we come back... I've won seven lottery game grand prizes. No one in the world's ever done that. The pros teach you the cons of betting your birthday. Why you shouldn't throw away your losing tickets. So what's your method? Next. 2020 continues with Elizabeth Vargas and the pros. It's easy to overlook the small, dusty, rundown town of Bishop, Texas. Population 3,000. But it may be one of the luckiest places on earth. At least for one lottery winner who bought four winning tickets in the area. Two at this now boarded up mini mart. Her total wins? More than $22 million. There are people who have won more money, but there aren't people who have beaten the odds repeatedly like that. The odds, one in 18 septillion. That's an 18 with a whopping 24 zeros after it. 18 septillion is about the number of raindrops that have ever fallen in the history of the Earth. And who is the odds-defying winner? A mysterious multimillionaire named Joan Ginther, with such a low profile that this 47-year-old yearbook photo is all we could find. Nobody even knows what she looks like. It's like she's a unicorn. She grew up in Bishop, and residents say she would return twice a year, staying at Bishop's only motel, just steps from the Times Market, sometimes for months at a time. She buy a lot of tickets all the time. She buy the whole roll. Her passion was scratch-offs. She always gave a $20 tip for every waitress, so everybody was excited. Luck just followed her. Well, it certainly raised a lot of eyebrows. Journalist Peter Mucha was intrigued enough to start poring over lottery records for a series for Philly.com. What he found was not Lady Luck, but a lady who seemed to know exactly what she was doing, buying massive quantities of scratch-off tickets from the tiny store. If you buy a hell of a lot of tickets, the lottery is going to send a hell of a lot more tickets, and if you just keep ordering, you'll end up with... Uh, all these tickets coming to the same place. Funneling so many tickets to one place, increasing the chance that the winner would end up there. There was a week in 2009 when the lottery sent 20% of all the tickets in Texas to the Times Market in Bishop. It was a $10 million scratch-off game, and Ginther won. She was leveraging very dramatically, increasing her odds. Even though there's no evidence that what Joan Ginther did is criminal, she's made herself impossible to find. We tried friends, relatives. I'm hoping to speak with someone named Joan Ginther. Even her former college. That would be Stanford University, where she just so happens to have a PhD in none other than mathematics. Decides to open when it comes to outsmarting the lottery, it helps to be a math genius. We're counting cards. We're not gambling. You may have heard about the MIT students who learned to count cards depicted in the movie 21. You may not have heard about James Harvey, an MIT senior who noticed a quirk in a Massachusetts lottery game named Cash Windfall. The goal in this game, match six random numbers and win the jackpot. And if the jackpot got to $2 million and nobody won, it would roll down or split between anyone who just matched three, four, or five numbers. Harvey realized he was virtually guaranteed a profit if he bought enough tickets and timed it perfectly to the roll down. So Harvey, along with a group of MIT students, bought a massive amount. They bought 700,000 tickets, cost $1.4 million. They worked with four different convenience stores. The stores would stay open all night. This went on for seven years, they, they, and they did this full time. This was so their lucrative. job. <laughs> yeah. Eventually, they made a total of more than three and a half million dollars profit by doing this. Three and a half million dollars. Yes, more than three and a half million dollars. 
Until finally, the Boston Globe wrote an expose, and Gregory Sullivan, the former inspector general, was asked to investigate. Do you think it was cheating? When the, the government investigated it, they found that it was legal. We rolled the dice and asked the MIT gang for an interview, but all bets were off. But not all repeat lottery winners are quite so elusive. Richard Lustig says he knows how to game the games, and he'll tell anybody who wants to listen. Increase your chances of winning more often and larger amounts of money. Luck has nothing to do with this. It's not something that just happened by chance. More money than most people will ever see in a lifetime. You have won the lottery many times. I've won seven lottery game grand prizes. No one in the world's ever done that. This was grand prize win number seven, and that was 98,900 and change, almost 99,000. Lustig's made more than a million dollars in the Florida lottery, with his seven biggest wins ranging from $10,000 to more than $800,000. What did you buy with your winnings? I bought a Jag. A Jaguar? Yep. Driving style. I bought a Harley. I bought my son his first car. And what is he driving? A Beamer. My wife and I, we've gone on dozens of cruises. Lustig says he relies not on luck, but on a method he touts in a book aptly titled, Learn How to Increase Your Chances of Winning the Lottery. So what's your method? It's a lot of things that you have to do. One tip, he says when you pick your numbers, don't just use dates. Most people who pick their own numbers pick birthdays, anniversaries. So all their numbers that they play are going to be between 1 and 31. So what you're doing is you're actually decreasing your chances of winning. Also, if you lose, don't throw out your ticket. Some lotteries have second chance drawings that offer big bucks. And he says, don't rely on computers to draw random numbers for you. Don't buy quick picks. Why? You're more likely to win something if you pick your own. But most lottery experts disagree. We asked Aaron Abrams, a math professor at Washington and Lee University. Quick picks produce randomly chosen numbers and those numbers should be no better or worse than any other numbers. And what about Lustig's advice to avoid using dates? If you want to avoid sharing a jackpot, you're better off probably choosing larger numbers than 31. But choosing large numbers will not affect your chances of winning. A lot of people say your method is bizarre. One quote is Richard Lustig is a get-rich-quick hack with no idea at all how to beat any lottery. How do you respond to that? If they've never won even one time, are you going to listen to them, or are you going to listen to me, who's won seven times? Maybe you're just really, really lucky. Oh, come on. People who say that, how can anybody seriously believe that I won seven times just because I'm lucky? Lustig has played the lottery every single day for more than 20 years, which begs the question. So how much money do you think you've spent on lottery tickets? I have no way of knowing. I never kept track. Are you breaking even? Are you sure you've made money? I'm ahead. I'm how ahead. far ahead? I don't know how far ahead, but believe me. Why are you sure you are then? Because I'm not digging into my pocket. Tonight's jackpot is approaching one point. I'm doing something that no one has ever done before. That's billion with a B. Then how come you haven't won the big lottery? I hope you have your tickets. Good luck. It just has not made my turn yet, I guess. Next. What do a hoodie and a hot dog have to do with a scandal at the very top? The person in the video is buying hot dogs, and he's not a hot dog guy. The Scammer, when we come back. Lottery Hangover continues on 2020 with Nick Watt. Just before Christmas 2010, a burly man walks into an Iowa gas station. He buys two items, a hot dog and a lottery ticket. What turns out to be a $16.5 million winning lottery ticket. The Moines Quick Trip sold the winning ticket, but a winner hasn't come forward just yet. That winning hot lotto ticket goes unclaimed. Someone has the ticket. Uh, the Iowa Lottery wants to give away the money. Almost a year goes by, and in Iowa, you only got a year to claim your winnings. Nothing. No one. Not a peep. And everybody was anxiously anticipating finding out who won. Was it somebody who'd had the ticket stolen from them? Uh, had somebody maybe been killed over it? Maybe it was just a guy who was trying to hide money from uh, his wife that he was divorcing. Sixteen and a half mil just waiting in the bank. Then... Ladies and gentlemen, we have the winning ticket. A Canadian lawyer claims he's the winner. He has all the right info, except... He claimed that he'd been in Des Moines on a business 
trip, wearing suit and tie, had gone to the convenience store and had bought some tickets. Uh, no hot dog? No hoodie? That rules him out. Well, at least uh, it indicated that he was fibbing. Then a New York lawyer steps forward to claim he represents a foreign corporation based in Belize. Yep, Belize, that apparently owns the winning ticket. But he won't name that man who bought the ticket, so no payout. Them's the rules. Terry Rich sounds deflated. We don't have the person nor all of the background information about this winning ticket. Then, with less than two hours left on that countdown clock, both claims are sensationally withdrawn. This is something we haven't experienced in the last, well, since the lottery began 26 years ago. Deflated and now suspicious, Terry Rich launches an investigation. So, this was a hot lotto who done it? Yeah, exactly. There were any number of conspiracy theories. The man under the hood is finally unmasked, identified, and arrested. A mystery puzzling Iowans for five years has been solved. Eddie Raymond Tipton, age 51 of Norwalk, Iowa, has been arrested and charged with two counts of fraud. Mr. Tipton is the cyber security boss at the Multi-State Lottery Association, which controls Hot Lotto and Powerball across the country. Here's Tipton, after his alleged jiggery-pokery, waxing to a CBS affiliate about the failure of computer users to take security precautions. It's an afterthought. Security's always been an add-on, and when when something happens, it's 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 too late. Cat's out of the bag. Cyber is key here, since unlike Powerball, there are no balls used in the hot lotto drawing. The numbers are randomly spit out by a highly secured computer that Mr. Tipton has access to. He somehow fixes those numbers in the computer, then goes to the gas station in disguise, armed with the numbers, manually picks them, buys that guaranteed winning. Doug Jacobson is a cybersecurity guru. So let's say I wanted to rig the lottery, I, and I wanted to win on... Don't do it, Doug. Don't do it. I won't. But he could. A so-called rootkit on a simple USB stick could infect the computer's operating system, enabling someone to secretly control seemingly random lottery numbers. How long would it take to do that? You could conceivably play all this out in a, in a minute or two. Get what you want, remove it, not a trace. Yep. Thomas Miller oversaw the investigation for two years. It defies all possible odds that he happened to just, in somewhat of a disguise, purchase what turned out to be the winning tickets and just happened to also be the director of the company that, that generated the winning ticket. So that's, that's enough of a coincidence to constitute evidence as far as I'm concerned. Charges and a trial. The focus is that Tipton in the now infamous video. Tipton's sister takes the stand. I've never seen him wear a hooded jacket. Never has he had a beard. We beg to differ. Here's a mugshot of Eddie with a fulsome goatee. Then it's little brother Tommy Tipton's turn on the stand. The person in the video also is buying hot dogs. And he's not a hot dog guy. He's a... He's a... He's go to Whataburger, Jack in the Box, and get a big meal kind of guy. I've never ever seen him buy hot dogs at a convenience store. Then Tipton's old college buddy speaks. It acts just like Eddie. The mannerisms are just like Eddie. So as a, as a disinterested third party, I would say, oh, that's Eddie. Oh dear, not very helpful friends and family, but is that enough? So far, there's really been no smoking gun uh, to show exactly how he did it. At trial, the jurors didn't hear from Eddie, but he heard from them. And we, the jury, find the defendant, Edward Tipton, guilty of fraud as alleged in count one. Sentenced just this past September to 10 years in prison. That's unlucky. He is appealing. It is frustrating because, really, cases in court should be tried based on actual evidence from the witness stand and not uh, leaps of logic uh, and that sort of thing. But wait, there's more. Experience has taught us that uh, uh, criminals don't commit just one fraud. There's an earlier Colorado lottery windfall over half a mil paid out in November 05 to Eddie Tipton's brother Tommy, currently under investigation but not charged. And two years later, a Wisconsin jackpot paid to Eddie's pal, Robert Rhodes, who is currently under indictment for fraud. A lifelong friend, 
college roommates and uh, in checking cell phone records, it was discovered that they were in contact with each other uh, almost every day. You, you couldn't write a movie script this rich with twists and turns. In fact, investigators say they've already identified a total of six suspicious jackpots across the country and expanded their search to 34 states. That when you see one cockroach, it's reasonable to believe that there's a hundred more that you don't see. Hi, I'm looking for Robert Rhodes, please. Mr. Rhodes not eager to talk when our affiliate KTRK came calling this week. Thank you. No All right. All right. We might just all be very lucky. It's reasonable to draw the conclusion that it wasn't merely a coincidence. Covering this trial, did it make you play the lottery more or less? Well, I did buy a Powerball ticket uh, twice in the last few weeks. How could you not at that level? One and a half billion dollars. I wonder if Eddie Tipton also couldn't resist. Next, we're taking you into the deep end of the pool. I put it on Facebook and they started showing up at my door with money. Hey! Whether you're chipping in for the lottery on your block or you gave at the office, how to not get bit by sharks. Joey, pay up, my friend. When Lottery Hangover returns. Deborah Roberts wades into the pool. Some 160 miles south of where one of those winning tickets was sold, it's game day. Oh, yeah. We are there capturing the scene during this week's jackpot drawing. $1.6 billion. Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where these co-workers stayed out late, confident their numbers would be called. Check this guy out. And why not? They've won before. Ah! Nearly three years ago, Lori Finkelstein Reader and 11 members of her real estate team each chipped in 20 bucks and started an office Powerball pool. We originally thought we won maybe like 100 or 150,000. And my husband turned around to me and he said, You know what? I think this is a million dollars. Do you remember when you got the text or the call? <laughs> there was 180 texts and there was literally 90 phone calls. So I called her and I was like, What happened? Is everybody okay? Like, you won. I'm like, Stop lying to me. And then they put me on a call. It was crazy. And there it is. They matched five of the six Powerball numbers, enough to win a cool million dollars. The last win was about 83000 After taxes, what, about $60,000 each? I did the realtor thing. I went and bought a house and put impact windows in it. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do with the money? Honestly, I blew it. <laughs> did you have a good time? I had at a least? great time. <laughs> Going to buy our winners. Talk about a lucky dozen. A nice payday for all but one. Jennifer Maldonado, the unlucky 13th worker who chose not to join the pool. We love you, Jen. It was just, hey, you know, we should really cut our co worker in. And um, I don't think it was a full 60 seconds. Every single person said, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. And yeah. Incredibly, Lori and her team graciously offered Jennifer a cut of the winnings, even though she'd only been there less than a month. Well, that was very emotional. Who gives, who gives money to, pe to new people who you just met, you know? Sadly, happy endings like this seem as rare as a rainbow unicorn when really big money is at stake. Take the case of the California hospital workers dubbed the Lucky Seven. A few years ago, the winners were barely pouring champagne, celebrating their $315 million prize when the problems began. With their newfound freedom, one co-worker split the money with the spouse and promptly got divorced. One moved to the Philippines and took up pig farming. None anticipated getting sued for a share of the loot, but it happened. That caught us all off guard. For a while in our office, it was a standing joke, okay, who sued the Lucky Seven today? Because people kept coming out of the woodwork. One jealous co-worker tried convincing a judge that he was part of the pool, even though he was off the day they purchased the ticket. The judge didn't buy it. So why do so many of us dive into the deep end of these risky workplace pools? More chances to hit that jackpot. Okay, then we need to get going and go buy our tickets. And increasing her odds is exactly what Billy Carger, an accounts payable clerk of Fort Worth, Texas, thought she'd do. I do have butterflies. They're just right here. Just, oh, $3,000 of tickets. 
It's hours before Wednesday's billion dollar drawing, and we're with Billy as she heads to a brand new gas station. I don't see a line either. Somebody's got to win eventually. Let it be us. She's heavy handed, all right, entrusted with more than three grand. Not from her office pool. Get this. My heart's doing this. <laughs> She's running a neighborhood <laughs> pool. I have brought with me $3,030 that's collected from my neighborhood. We are buying 1,515 tickets. Whoa, <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> 280 people in her tight-knit community with more cattle than cowboys ponied up at least $10 a clip. Good luck to us. Bye. Bye. I put it on Facebook and they started showing up at my door with money. Hey, how you doing? There was a part of me that was afraid if I don't join, I'll be the only one left in Sendera Ranch while everybody else moves away. How fun would it be if everybody around here won together? But the motto in this Texas town should be, in Billy we trust. Every one of those 1,500 15 tickets she bought is accounted for, entered on her own personal spreadsheet, and locked away in a gun safe. It's what experts say is the first of a series of crucial tips when joining any kind of pool, electing a trustworthy, well-organized leader. Which brings us back to Fort Lauderdale and Lori Finkelstein Reader's Realty Company. I'm apparently the Powerball leader, and you need to have one. Where just hours before the Powerball drawing, she was collecting the last $75 entry fee. Joey! Joey! Pay up, my friend. I got it. Here we go. Let's go. You're the last person. Put up that money, my 20, friend. 20, 40, 60, 75. You got it, my friend. Give me a hug. No offense, Laura. So you all trust her when she's going to buy these tickets? Oh, <laughs> and we know where she lives. <laughs> and you know where she lives. Just in case they've already tackled tip number two, sign a contract. Uh, we also have everybody sign something agreeing that when we win, we will automatically donate 10% right off the top. I like the way you say when we win as yes, opposed when to we if win. we win. Right. And they may want to add a clause with the expert's third tip, no buying tickets outside of the pool. Okay, honest. Moment of honesty. Has anybody bought tickets outside the office pool? <laughs> of course. Of course. Okay, so what if you were to win outside the office pool? Oh, I love this. Me too. They still would all get somewhat of a cut of the money. Yeah. Again, somewhat on video. of a cut. <laughs> As for our pools. Here it is. We have to go to work tomorrow, y'all. <laughs> no. They ran dry. We all have to go to work, but you know what? I enjoyed it. We enjoyed it. <laughs> and though they weren't so lucky this time around in Florida, these buoyant brokers say they have no lotto hangover. They vow to be back. It seems like part of the fun is just dreaming. If you don't have big dreams, how do you know if you can ever reach them? You need to dream so big that it's untouchable. <laughs> If you've ever joined an office pool, let us know the steps you took ahead of time to make sure everyone stays friends afterward. Win or lose. Use the hashtag ABC2020. And we had our own 2020 office pool, and you won't believe it, we won. We did? We did. Stay tuned for the big reveal coming up. You call that winning? <laughs>